Welcome YouTubers, Uncle Dave from DC's Adventures coming to you with another review video. Uh, today we're looking at my favorite Condor tool. Uh, the, my favorite blade that Condor makes out in uh, El Salvador. This is the Condor Village Parang. Uh, they make a couple different Parangs. They make a bushcraft model and they make uh, which is a little bit longer than this and they make a uh, an eco survival model which is a little lighter and a little smaller than this I don't really like that one the bushcraft ones okay but this just with how thick this one is and how sturdy it is I just don't think you can beat this thing this is such a great bushcraft survival tool whether you're in jungle or even if you're in a forest like I am up in boreal forest obviously an axe is a little bit better but this blade has about two pounds maybe a little bit more than two pounds of metal in it and this thing functions like an axe. You get some good deep cuts, that's a piece of oak behind us, and uh, yeah, the thing's made out of uh, 1075 steel. You can sharpen it up really quick. It, uh, it doesn't chip, because it's not so hard that it's gonna take chips easily, which is good for a machete or a praying. But it's uh, hard enough that it gets really sharp. You can put a really good edge on it and it'll stay for a while. Uh, the back of it is also 90 degree spine and it will throw sparks off of your ferro rod because it is a carbon steel. Throws sparks really well actually. And uh, you should be able to get sparks with that with a uh, flint. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I imagine with it being 1075 you should be able to throw sparks with it. It uh, has this rounded handle, which I actually like. I know some people like to shape this handle up a little bit more, but I, I think this handle is perfect, especially with the bulge. The bulge that it has on the end, you can really get a hold of it when you're trying to really chop like an axe chop. It really makes it so it's not going to slip out of your hands. Uh, made by Condor, I think uh, this one was actually designed by Joe Flowers, it might have been in 2012. It's 2015 this year and they did come out with a couple new models. They uh, came out with a really good line this year actually. Uh, they have that Frontier knife that's really sweet that I'm going to look at, the Final Frontier. But uh, they came out with a new one of these that's a little bit lighter. It's a Village Parang but it's still a little bit lighter. I think it might have the blade that that Eco has on it. But again, like I said, the reason why I like this blade so much is because of how heavy and how much weight it is behind it. You can really chop up some hard wood with this thing. So uh, I guess instead of doing all the talking, get to what everybody loves seeing and let's get to some chopping and see what this thing can do. All right, here we are to cut. See here, let's see what this thing can do right here, huh? That's pretty deep. I mean, look at that. A couple inches in there. This tree that we're cutting here, too, isn't just being cut for the video. This is actually scheduled to be chopped down, turned into firewood. It's just one of the oaks that are in the middle of the pine grove I'm trying to build here. And the reason why I wanted to use this uh, tree too is because this is just far bigger than anything you would ever be using to build a shelter with uh, in bushcraft or in wilderness survival. Whether you're out here in the boreal forest or you're in the jungle, it really doesn't make much of a difference. But uh, look at how big the chunks you can take out of this. This is basically. Like I said before, I think I think this can cut. I think that this thing can do just as much cut work as a uh, small forest axe can, or a hunter's axe, or a hatchet. I'd say definitely. Uh, let's go see how it cuts up rounds that I made with the Baco Laplander. Because if you carry this with a Baco Laplander. You should be able to do anything you really need to do as far as bushcraft and wilderness survival goes. So let's go check out those rounds. Alright, this here, and this is a, it's kind of a long piece, but this is on the large side for the backhoe. The backhoe Laplander, I mean, anything larger than that is going to take you forever to chop up.
So chopping firewood, processing some firewood with this in a Laplander is all you need. All you need for most bushcraft stuff. Survival stuff. Uh, if you're setting up base camp out in the forest, yeah, this isn't going to cut it. You're going to need an axe. But this thing, if you can aim better than I can, this thing works pretty darn good. Although it's a large blade, so when doing stuff like this, if you swing off, you're going to hurt yourself really bad. This is a large blade. So you need to make sure that your leg and body are far clear of this thing, of all the blade. easily split firewood and these ones are a little bit long so it's kind of a pain but uh, yeah it definitely does the work of an axe I'd say uh, a small axe at least or a hatchet wouldn't have been really any easier chopping those logs I mean they're a little long if they were shorter they would have chopped with one slap um, yeah again I uh, I like this thing I think this is one of the best large blades you can carry. It's just so practical for so many environments. Well there we go guys. The Condor Village Parang. Sweet, I love that thing. Uh, um, 12 inch blade on it. Has this bead blasted finish right here. It's like indented. Makes it look like it was like old world forged like uh, with a hammer. Looks pretty cool. Sharpens up really easy in this 1075. Like I said before, it has uh, the blade comes in a little bit right here, so you can really get in there when you try to carve. So you can still do a lot of light carving and uh, trigger making and trap setting and stuff like that for this. Uh, it's a great blade. I really love it. Made in El Salvador. Keep it oiled because it's 1075 and it will rust. Keep it stropped up. Sharpen it often. This thing will be a good tool, help you out, get you through a lot of different environments. It can chop through some pretty heavy hardwood. I don't think you can beat it as far as a large blade goes. So once again, Condor Village Parang, Uncle Dave DC's Adventures. Rate, comment, and make sure you're subscribed so you get all the latest uploads. And real quick, at the end of this video here, this is the sheath that comes with it, which I don't really care for, although it's a very nice sheath. As you can see, it's all brown leather. Uh, it has a El Salvador stamp on the back and a Condor stamp on the front. Uh, double clasp here, so you can undo it here. And always put your hand above it, never on the bottom, just in case you cut through. Uh, and it fits really nice. It's a nice sheath. It has a swivel, swivel on the back here. It's a nice sheath, but I think this swivel, one, it's holding up now, but I think uh, hauling in the woods on a belt for a long time, this swivel would probably fail, but it hasn't, so I can't say anything about that yet. But just this style sheath isn't what I would particularly want for a parang. I think a parang should be in a sheath that comes from the top where it slides straight out the top where there's no restraint to it. So you can just pull it out, you know. Uh, this is a real pain in the butt to get in and out. Especially with the second straps. But you got to always make sure the straps are behind the blade, obviously. Because you'll cut the straps if you put the blade in while the straps are down. So that's why they swing out. But... Still, I just don't think that this is the best. I don't think this is the best sheath that they could have gone with. Plus, all leather. Uh, praying is generally a jungle device, you know. It's a tool that you would use in lush jungle in Thailand. Uh, it's a Malaysian design. And, uh, yeah, leather like this isn't going to hold together in a wet environment like the jungles of Thailand. Let me tell you. Again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next video.